Welcome back. In this demo, the objective is to show you the Informatica Power Center debugger to debug the logic or the data of a mapping. Now, this is the same mapping that I've been demoing in the previous demos. And notice that we're, we're, what I'm trying to do is that out name is uppercase and that goes to the name of the target. V item, which is Apple's the type of product that has been purchased, that should go to item. And the requirement was that we need to left trim, right trim, and make it uppercase. And in order to do that, we applied a function. So please review the prior demos if you need to understand it. So the upper trim item was a function created by us using the user defined functions features. Now, let me quickly preview this data and I'm going to actually just quickly log in and notice that something is wrong. You see item, apple, orange, pear. So if my logic is correct, when I run this, and I've already created the workflow, let me just refresh the mapping. And let's go ahead and run this, start the workflow. The monitor shows that the workflow has been run. Here it is, and it has been succeeded. Now, the output, when I configure this, I told it to go to a file, and I actually told it to output field names, and also give it a name called customer products underscore JLCSV. So I'm showing you that because now I'm going to quickly go to the info share directory. Remember that it's stored under info underscore shared underscore L2, and here it is. Now, I'm going to simply bring this up with Notepad just so that I can show you, so that I can scroll. And again, I could have used any other tool for this. And notice I maximize it. I'm trying to go to column, call item, and notice item is empty. Where's apples in uppercase? Where's oranges? So the column item is in uppercase. So something is wrong. Now, I can spend a lot of time debugging this by running it again, setting session logs. And let me just also go back and preview the data one more time. I want to show you one more thing. So notice that obviously item does have something. If I traverse it, I also see that it has null values. So what I'm actually outputting, could it be that the values of items are being lost? What have I done? Well, according to the output of the workflow, there is nothing being output there. So I wonder what's wrong. Now, I'm going to use a technique called the debugger. The, the Informatica Power Center data integration product has a debugger. If you look under Tools, Customize, you see the debugger? If I click here, it means that I want the icons to be displayed on the user interface itself because under Mappings, I could actually go ahead and run the debugger. Here it is. But it's much easier to configure to let the icons appear rather than using the menu. So notice now here it is. And now the debugger will start a workflow session. So be careful, it will, that session will stay running in the workflow for as long as you're running the debugger. Two, the debugger must have a valid mapping. Let me validate this. If I do not have a valid mapping, the debugger will not let you. And there's a few other constraints on debugger, but the debugger should have been covered fully in the Power Center Developer 1 class. In the Power Center Level 2 Developer class, you are asked to execute this, and some of you may not know how to do this. Therefore, I am demo demonstrating it. So let's begin with the debugger. I'm going to start the debugger. Here are the icons, and notice we can start, stop, step into the next instance, which means transformation, step in, into instance, which is the transformation. So go to the next or step in and then show the current continue until you end of data. You hit end of data or a breakpoint, break now, and also we can insert breakpoints. So notice something is wrong here. Now let's see what could possibly be wrong. So let me run the debugger and you get a wizard and, and a lot of it is configuration. It's good and it's bad. It's tedious because we got to go through these these many uh, windows in the wizard. So the IS create a debug session. Normally that's what I do. And the connection points. Remember, we have two sources. 
So you do, don't forget that you need to set the connections. I already had them. So ODS, ODS. And what about the output file? Well, for the output, I am writing, this time I'm writing to customer, customer product underscore JL. And do I really want to output also the headers? Now, it really doesn't matter because I'm not going to actually save this. So the output file, output file name, the reject file, everything that you get in the session setup that you get, and here's the output, output field names. So again, it's not important that I set the target because you're going to see that I'm going to say don't actually save the data. Now I'm going to go ahead and click next, next, and you get this other wizard window. And notice the row type is insert, the DTM buffer size, 12 million, 12 megabytes. Pay attention to this because when you get to the performance tuning labs and my demos, we'll see that we can alter our memory settings. But for right now, just leave defaults. And do you want to discard the target data? Yes. And otherwise I could save it, but I just want to discard it. And here it is. The debugger has just started. And the first thing I do, the typical status window, which I really don't care about right now, I'm going to try to make as small as possible because I want enough room for the instance, which is the transformation, and I want enough space for the target. Now notice these windows can be moved. Target, instance, but by convention we want sources on the left and target on the right. And you can adjust them as you, as you want. Now we're ready. So what I'm going to do is actually, uh, let's see, I'm going to start the debugger, and, and actually I'm going to run it, let it run. And I'm going to actually put this in all iconic so we can see it much better. There it looks a picture is better. And go ahead, run. Notice it's reading the data. And in the instance, you can actually position yourself in which transformation that you care about. Now, something is going wrong in the expression. And well, it could be earlier, but I preview the data and we saw that we really do have item data. It could have been the joiner, unlikely because we might have made a mistake in the port, ports, but unlikely, because it used to run before, and it stopped running when we added the, the expression transformation to make item uppercase. So I think it's here. Why don't we view that? And let's, let's, let's assume that I really don't know that that's where the problem is. So I will view what's coming in in Joiner, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and go to the next transformation, and you see Joiner, here is... The name is Mickey, and here is item. So there really is a real value. Now I'm going to go to the expression. So far, I'm not there yet, so I'm going to hit go to the next transformation up here, next instance. So now I'm in the FX. Notice Apple does come in, but look what's going on to the O item, the one that's the output, nothing. I can keep stepping in, stepping in. Notice Raspberry. Uh, that, there goes the null data for items, so we do have some null values. So there goes cat, rabbit, and then if you look at the target, nothing is being written for item. So what is wrong? Something is wrong here. Well, if you think you know what's wrong, you could actually go ahead and you can go to mappings. And here, notice we have the same, same menu here. Notice I could actually evaluate expression. So I can actually figure out what could be wrong and try to fix it from here. But I'm not going to do it that way. I'm actually going to stop the debugger and I'm going to break now because I think I know what the problem is. So shut down debugger. There it is. I just shut it down. And guess what? Let's see what could have happened. We see that this is coming out with no data. It is receiving data. And a lot of this will just be debugging once you find the, the bug to correct it. Ah, let's go into this expression. Look, the output is V item itself. So notice V item, which is a variable, is taken V item, which is the empty string, and then assigning it to O. There goes my mistake. The port that I should have here should be name. So actually item. So that's what I just typed in, item, assuming I don't make any more mistakes. Go ahead and save this. And Let's go ahead and save this, uh, validate, validate and repository save. And let's quickly run the debugger. I could run the workflow, but I want to show you the debugger. Now I should, I should not have to configure anything since it does remember 
my properties. And so I'll just quickly click next, next. And now those three windows are going to appear. And same thing as before, make the status one as small as possible. And what we want is this time I'm going to put myself under expression and I'm going to run it all the way until the next transformation. Oops, I need to position myself there and then I can look at it and let's see what's inside of here. Let's see. And now notice item comes in and look at the O item, Apple, uppercase and trim. So that was the problem. And I just used the debugger to solve this. But one more point. So that solves the problem. That was a mystery. But I do want to talk about breakpoints. Sometimes you want to add breakpoints. Remember that when I previewed the data for product, there was some null data for item. Why don't we add a breakpoint to see if there's null data to stop? Now remember, this is another problem. We already fixed the logical issue. Here, I want to add a breakpoint. And so I add a breakpoint. And now here, I want to say that when item when item comes in as null, is null, stop. That's what the breakpoint means. So there it is. And let me run until, actually I'm going to run continue until it hits end of data or a breakpoint. So when I run, I let it run and it stopped. And you see item, no data. If I run it again, it keeps running until it hits null. There goes more records and then it hits null data. And eventually, if I keep doing this, it's going to go through all the null data. Notice how it's writing and stopping when there is null data. So we can actually do this. And now it's end of data now. So run till the end of data. Okay. Or stop now. So I just wanted to show you a breakpoint. I'm going to stop the debugger now. And that will conclude our demo for showing you how the debugger works. Thank you very much.